Hello YouTube, this is Frugal. Now, a funny thing happened since the last time I did an NGX video, and that funny thing is that I decided I wanted to get a lot more structured, and I wanted to do things more realistically, even more realistically. I know some people have already said, wow, your videos are pretty realistic. Um, so I joined British Airways Virtual, who are probably one of the hardest of hardcore uh, virtual airlines out there. They are actually sponsored or supported by British Airways for real. They have something like 1,250 pilots and they're incredibly active and they do things completely by the book. Now, one of the things that came out of that was I wanted to learn how to do a flight plan myself. Uh, better than I have been doing it. You know, following the tutorials is great, but it gives you everything. And I kind of really wanted to learn how to do it completely on my own. So I did some digging. I did some digging on YouTube and on the forums. Found a video from a guy who goes by, no, I can't pronounce this, goes by M-K-B-K-A-E-D-I. I'll link his video. Talking about a couple of tools that I've got and a couple of tools that I didn't got. Uh, he's talking about using FS Build to plan the flight, but also as a fuel planner, which I hadn't considered before. And then he's talking about Topcat, which a lot of people that fly the NGX here from PMDG recommend getting. So that's very interesting. He also talks about something called EFB from Avalosoft. Now in the follow-up video, I am actually gonna show that working. I'm just running through setting up on a second machine. I'm gonna record on the second machine as well as this first one. That That is a very, very cool tool that lets you do a lot of flight planning on the fly, uh, as it were, excuse the pun but right now today you know his video which is linked you can go look at it is very very useful and gives you a lot of great tips it does miss out some of the noob stuff so he, he does kind of skip a bunch of things like initially setting up the flight so I am gonna cover that right now right here so in this video we're gonna look at flight planning from a more realistic point of view not completely 100% realistic you know we're not in a dispatch office at an airline I don't have access to all the stuff they do but using FS build and using top cat and then uh, feeding that stuff in down here in the PMDG 737 NGX. So, this flight and the next video are a flight from London Gatwick to Rome for British Airways Virtual. Incidentally, in the next video, we're also going to be looking at radar contact, which is pretty amazing. Um, so, the first thing we're going to do is set up a route. What you need to do, get FS built. It's pretty cheap. Go into aircraft, and you have a big list of aircraft here. Now, with the latest update to this, they're always updating this. If you go to FS Build's website, you can download updated profiles for aircraft. So you can see I've got two or three profiles here for the same aircraft. So there's 700 there, 700 BBJ there, 800, and so on. I should have a 600. I don't know why it dropped out. I'm flying a 737-800 today. <clears throat> so what we're going to do in here is we're going to change the... Uh, unit that we're working into kilograms because we're flying in Europe. Now, I got a, a couple of tips from his video and also from forums and from British Airways virtual forums of standard numbers that get entered over here. Uh, in fact, let me just go over here and we're going to put in a, a standard 2760 is my flight number. That's probably wrong. I haven't checked my flight number recently. Um, now, my taxi fuel, standard weight in kilograms is 350. My hold fuel, standard weight in kilograms is 1500. We're not really going to worry about the payload weight, or are we? Hmm, yes we are. Now, let's say that we're going to be carrying, uh, let's say, 130 passengers. Let me bring up Notepad here. I've got some notes. A standard passenger weighs 79.2, and they typically have 20 kilograms of luggage. <coughs> so if you've got 130 of them, you've got 130 multiplied by 20, plus 130 multiplied by 79.2 in there pretty damn good. So we can fire up a calculator now and we can work out a payload weight of what we're carrying. So 130, pretty simple, multiplied by 20 is obviously going to be that, 2600. And then we're going to, let's just add that into memory so I don't forget because my brain's going. Now 130 multiplied by 79.2, 10,296. So let's add on our luggage 12,896 kilograms. We can round that up, which we're going to do. So I'm going to put in here payload weight of 12,900. Round it up. Excuse me? <coughs> so we've got a payload weight. Uh, FS Build here is going to need all this to calculate our fuel burn, which I never realized it could do. So what we can do now is go to Web Planners down here. We're going to part here from EGKK. And we are going to fly to Lurf, which is Rome. And I wanted to find every flight plan that could possibly find me between that and let's put this up to FL390. Like so, cycle 1212. I have the latest AirX cycle. Um, go to Navigraph's website and you can get it there. It's very, very cheap. Let's find the route here. It's going to give me SIDS and STARS. I probably actually didn't want a SID and a STAR, but that's fine. 
Okay, so we got a root here. Here it is. That's the root. So the SID, you got a SID placeholder here, a, SID, a star placeholder here. We're all good. What you can do is just copy this, go back into root here, and we can pretty much paste this all in. Look at that. Look at that. Now it's choosing here a SID, standard instrument departure of big 7M. We're going to knock that out. We don't need that. And it's chosen for us a runway. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. We don't know the runway we're taking off from. Um, we don't know the runway we're landing on. Presumably in the real world you could find this stuff out. I could find this out now. I could fire up the um, ATIS in here and have a look. We're not going to. We'll skip all that. I want pretty accurate numbers, not, not amazing, amazing numbers. So take off those two placeholders. Now, next thing you need to do, assuming you have everything set up in here, if you go into options, there's all these directories you need to set up for where things go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to exclude the SID and the start. Great. I got top of climb, top of descent. Great. I'm going to export to FSX. I'm also going to export to, uh, let's just say I'm going to fly with VATSIM to FSN, and I'm going to export to, actually that's FSX right there. Let's get rid of that one. And I'm going to export to, uh, where's my PMDG? PMDG, there it is. So this will actually build a flight plan ready to go for the PMDG. I don't know why my screen just got corrupted. That's kind of awkward. Can I uncorrupt that? Probably not. That's probably because of the way I'm recording it right now. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so with all that done, I just click on build. There we go. It's recommending a flight level of 41,000 feet. It's created all my flight plans and we're good to go. Now the cool bit here is if you actually click on Navlog, this is very, very awesome. This is the amount of fuel that's going to require me to reach Rome. 4,957 kilograms of fuel, which we will round up to 5,000. It's, it's saying here as well, given the hold fuel, given the taxi fuel, given our possible divert over here to Lira, wherever that is, um, we're actually going to need 9,195, which we will round up to 9,200 pounds of fuel. So that's the fuel, the, the uh, flight planning with fuel burn, which is pretty damn awesome based on everything we already know about the aircraft. What you do now is you fire up Topcat. Now, one of the things that always confused the hell out of me, and I actually stopped this mid pre-flight, so let him continue for a second. But one of the things that always confused the hell out of me is down here on the FMC, when you get into the um, init ref stuff, you know, takeoff uh, engine settings and, and all this good stuff, you get that derated, take, derated engine stuff. I never knew how to calculate that. That's really where Topcat comes in. I'm actually going to pause this because I don't want it running away with me. But what we can do now, there's FS build. This is Topcat. Now, Topcat looks hideously complicated because it really is. Now, once you get the hang of it, it's actually not that bad. What we do, first of all, choose our aircraft. So I've got two aircrafts in here, 737-700, 737-800. I'm going to go with that one. We go weights and balances now, and now it gets very interesting. So the type of flight, it's a scheduled flight, not a charter flight. Now, if I look at my little notes that I had, where's notepad? Uh, we're going to be carrying 130 passengers. So we're going to stick 10 of them, our children, let's say, 120 of them. Uh, not children. Okay, pretty good. Now our baggage, we already decided that was 2,600 pounds. Oh, sorry, 2,600 kilograms. So we're all good there. So I got my passengers. I got my baggages. We're fabulous. Now, fuel on board. Um, hang about. We need to change all of this. We are flying. That flight number's wrong. I think the flight number's still wrong. We're going to be flying from EGKK, which is London Gatwick. And we're going to be flying to Lurf which is Rome, pretty damn good. We have an alternate, which is Lira, like that, which is great. Now, our fuel on board, total fuel on board we can get from over here. Total fuel on board is 9,195 kilograms. So we're gonna say 9,200 kilograms. We know that our taxi fuel is 350 kilograms. We know that our trip fuel, look at this, is 5,000 kilograms, like so. Pretty damn good. Now, what is actually done here, ha having entered all this stuff, our weights and balances, is actually telling me the stuff that the PMG DG737 would normally tell me. It's telling me here that we have a stabilizer trim that's going to be required of uh, plus five. So we can write that down, make a note of that. So stab trim of plus 5.0, which is awesome. We go back over to Topcat here. It's saying our zero fuel weight here is 54,430 kilograms. So zero fuel weight of 54,400, let's put a comma in there, 430 kilograms. 
which is equally awesome and amazing. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now, having put all that stuff in, we can go over here. Now, this is fabulous. Look at this. It knows now where we're flying from. It knows where we're flying to. It wants me to choose a runway. Um, let's, let's say that I'm going to go runway 8 left, I think it is. Runway 8 left, runway 8 right. Runway 8 right. There. So we're going to go runway 8 right. Let's say. We don't know. We'll probably call the radio at this point and find out. I can now click on update. And it's going to give me the meta for London Gatwick. So here we go. Um, variable wind at three knots, a few clouds. That's pretty cool. It's not raining for a change, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. But it's now updated everything in here, which is great. Current temperature is plus four, for example. And our QNH is 1023. So having done all of that lovely stuff, this, by the way, came from the Weights and Balances page, which is great. Our flaps configuration for takeoff is going to be now my screen is all screwing up because of how I'm recording this, so bear with me. We're just going to go, there we go, standard takeoff, air conditioning is going to be on, flaps 5, standard takeoff, anti-ice, mm, we don't actually need it, it's 4 degrees, so that's fine. We're all good there. What I can actually do at this point is click on compute. And it will have a long, hard think. And it will come back and tell me, D-rated takeoff, 55 degrees Celsius, which is going to give me a maximum N1 of 88.4%. Let's make a note of that. So 55 and 88.4. So D-rate to 55 degrees. And so we should find that our N1 max is, what did we say it was? 88.4. 88.4%. Fantastic. Great. Now we can actually go and take all of this information. Oh, by the way, this is also useful as well. When you're filling out, if you're going to fill out the, the CDU down here properly, you actually should be knowing what this is, which is total distance available on runway 8 right. Assuming we are actually going to go runway 8 right. That's 3676 meters long. We need to convert that to feet. Sorry, this should be actually the other way around. It's meters to feet. You multiply it. But we can fire up a calculator here. So there we go. There's my calculator. So if we have, what is it, 3,676, so 3,676 multiplied by 3.28 gives me 12,000 feet, 12,057 feet. So runway, whoops, fun way, runway is 12,057 feet. Great, we've actually got pretty much everything there that we would need now to program up the FMC. I'm going to get rid of this note. All right, I made a note of them so I can see them on a second screen. You're not going to see them right now. I'm going to go into the cockpit and show you how to set all this stuff up. And then we can kind of cross-check everything, which is kind of awesome as well. Okay, here we are in the cockpit. So now we can go through setting all that stuff up that we just found out from FS Build and from TopCat. And it's pretty cool. Now, I've got to go through some startup stuff here. I'm using FS to crew, so my first officer is doing most of it for me, but I still need to align the IRSs. We'll get those going. And then while that's going, we'll jump straight on down to the FMC here. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is loading up uh, fuel. So we are going to click on fuel here. Total kilograms of fuel on board is nearly 21,000. What we can do is load up FS build here. Our total fuel required is actually 9,200. So we we'll key that in. So 9,200. Like so. Let the PMDG MGX uh, decide which tanks everything goes in, which is pretty cool. Now we're going to load on our payload, all our passengers. We've got 10 kids who are going to go in first class, which is the correct place for them. And 120 adults in the back, or 120 idiots in the back. I know some of you like that previously. Front cargo, where we're carrying 2,600 kilograms of cargo. And I know some people bias these. They'll put more in one and less in the other. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put in 1,300. And it will screw up the calculations a little bit doing this, I've noticed. Specifically, center of gravity. Um, they'll differ somewhat from what we worked out in Top Cat. Uh, it doesn't affect things too much. I would love to hear a comment from a pilot in the comment section below as to why these are biased and uh, what I really should be doing. I don't know that just yet. But anyway, passengers are all loaded up there. Cargo is all loaded up there. Now we can go to planning the route. And this is where things get very, very cool. If we go up to the FMC, the first thing we need to do is set up our posinit, our initial position. So we are at EGKK. Like so, it wants to know the initial position here, which I can pick up from the GPSs because the IRSs have now aligned. There we are. Now we can set up the route. Now the cool thing is, because I exported the route in, oops, I shouldn't have typed that in. Because I exported the route from FS Build in PMDG format, I can just load it up here. I can click on this button, and I can browse through a list of saved routes. I'm not going to do that. You can just type it in. 
So it is EGKK, and we're flying to Lerf, which is in Rome. Or is Rome, I should say. Type that in, it loads the route up. Pretty damn cool. Uh, I'm going to presume at the moment runway 8 right. I really should check Meta, but in the interest of a short video, I'm not going to bother doing all that. So put in there 8 right. Put in my flight number, BA British Airways 2760, which is probably the wrong flight number. I haven't bothered checking it. It doesn't really affect the flight. Click on Activate. Click on Execute. We're all good. Now we can go to Perf in it. This is where things normally get quite confusing. Now, British Airways Virtual always flies with a cost index of 28. So that one's easy. Now we can look at FS to build, FS, FS build once again for our fuel reserves. Our fuel reserves should be 1800, so 1769 rounded up. So that would be 1.8 thousand. Put that in there. Click on zero fuel weight and click it again. It's saying 54.3. Now if I bring up my notes here, look what we already calculated. Zero fuel, zero fuel weight from uh, Topcat indicated 54.4 not too shabby not too shabby a little bit out but not really enough to really upset the the flight plan or anything like that i mean if you get a couple of very large people on board that's going to screw that up anyway isn't it so not too worried about that our flight level is four one zero put that at the top here and we are pretty much all good to go planned fuel um i should be putting that in i'm not going to oh it's saying max altitude of four zero three based on other stuff so let, let's actually go down let's go to 390 and again that somewhat screws up the amount of fuel that we have on board but it's not a big deal execute great I think this is our trip fuel isn't it I'm fairly certain that's our trip fuel I'm gonna skip it but normally you would put in I think trip fuel there our uh, transition altitude here is uh, 6,000 feet and I know some of you know I'm frugal you should put it in N1 limits. This is where I always get confused now. I never know what to set in here. Well, that's what Topcat already gave us in the calculations up here. It said derate the engines to 55, giving us a max N1 of 88.4. So we can do that here. Put in here 55 degrees. Boom. It said 88.4 from Topcat. The PMD GNGX 737 NGX is actually saying 89.4. That's pretty good. I'm quite happy. And we are all set. Now I can put in my flaps. I can let it pick up its center of gravity. I can put in here my V speeds, all correctly calculated, based on fuel, payload, everything else, which has all been calculated because we worked through it. And finally, my runway length, which we worked out as 12,057 feet. So let's say 12,100. 12,100 feet, and we're all good. That's it. That's all there is to it in terms of properly or semi-properly planning a, a flight with FS Build and with Topcat. In the next video, we're actually going to fly this route, so London Gatwick to Rome, using radar contact, which will be very cool, and using the Ablosoft EFB, which is amazing. You've got to see that thing to believe it. Thanks for watching. As always, my name is Frugal. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below, and be gentle. See you soon.